The world is so much bigger than our backyard. And it's rewarding to put yourself into a new environment that, that is so, so foreign and so different than anything you've experienced back home. Duck hunting itself is familiar, but the environment is different. The species are different. Their rules of engagement are different. And you know, one of the greatest things about this waterfowl odyssey, I get to do this again. I get to come back to this wonderful country of Africa and experience a different part of it for these different birds. To most people, Africa evokes iconic images of a dry wasteland with iconic species like zebras and elephants and rhinos. But it's such a big country and such an amazing place, even though there's only 15 inches of rainfall or less, it's an amazing diversity of waterfowl. The shooting quality rivals Mexico and Argentina. The, the, the quality uh, of, of some of these rare species like the African pygmy goose or the, the Egyptian goose on its, on its native range, the large spur wing goose, it, it's just, it's, it's utterly amazing. And you know, as a hunter, I'm, I'm not a collector of species, but as a collector of experiences and of adventures, those specialized species, the little niches and nooks and crannies that these different waterfowl species exploit just draw me further down the trail into adventure. You're in a foreign land, a foreign country, and, and, the, and the, 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 so many of the species and the landscape rolling through the window just look so bizarre and so much different than anything you've ever seen. But then you pull up to the duck hole and you see the water and, and, and you get the blinds and you throw the decoys out and you realize I'm duck hunting. I, this is a game I know. No matter, it's, it's like playing baseball. No matter which baseball field you show up to play, the fundamentals of the game are still the same. You know, the world's a whole lot bigger than our own backyard. And the Egyptian goose is maybe not even a goose. It's, it's actually related to the, to the shell ducks of the world. But they've really done well in South Africa because of, because of the agriculture. They love the corn and the soybeans. And, but how they're typically hunted here is much differently than we hunt them at home. They decoy. They, they come right into to, uh, static and motion decoys as pretty as anything you'd want, but that's not the traditional way to hunt them. And when I'm in Africa, I want to hunt the traditional way. So we formed a shooting line in between the decoys, which are about 100 yards from us, and, and the roosts, and we intercepted them coming in low over the decoys. Some of them were lower than others. Some of them were higher than others. We say back home, it's not sky busting if they fall. And we took the 40 and 50 yard shot. And, it, and it's a very it's a very challenging hunt. It's a very rewarding hunt. It, it's a fun hunt. I, I, I dare say it's as much fun as anything I've done over here is shooting those Egyptian geese. As a, as a the trigger pulling part of me really, truly enjoyed the Egyptian geese. I like the traffic. I like the shot presentations. I like the way we hunted. I like I like the social aspect. We were hidden, but we would shout down the line just a little bit to mark. We'd laugh. We'd compliment each other on good shots. It's a lot like being in a very elongated duck blind. I really enjoyed that aspect. Shooting, shooting those Egyptian geese 
the traditional way, which is very European. It, it's, it's, a little, it's a lot of pass shooting involved. It felt awkward to start with. The, the decoys were 100, 150 yards behind us. We were looking away from the decoys uh, over the cornfield, the standing cornfield, towards Lake or Lakes Unknown where the Egyptian geese were roosted. And just a little after daylight, they started coming off, making their, their growl. You could hear them coming. Uh, one foggy morning especially, you, you could hear them before you could see them. And when they popped out, they were in range. But it, it, it felt it felt so different because I, I wanted to be in the decoy, especially when I turned around and looked and could see the birds working those decoys. I'm like, wait, that's where I need to be. But it wasn't. There, there's no way we could possibly have shot more birds being in the decoys than the way we were shooting them in the very uh, African traditional method. It, and and it, was, it was very rewarding that way. I'd never done it. But, but that's so much of what you walk away from by putting yourself into another hunting environment. That, that's part of the adventure, is learning to hunt their way as well as your own. By all indications, they're decoying ducks, principally the yellow-billed ducks and the red-billed teal, is an afternoon event. We get up the crack of dawn to go shoot our puddle ducks over ponds, over decoys. Here, they go out in the afternoon. The birds really don't start to come in and become active un until right at sunset. But somewhere between three o'clock and, and dark, you get a couple of hours of very steady shooting uh, we, we, we called to the teal and to the, the yellow bills with, with mallard calls and teal calls. They work, they come in, it's action packed. It, it's a lot of fun. Here, their, their shooting hours are a little more lax. You can shoot until 30 minutes past sunset. And for those that can see that late, it makes a difference because the ducks are really, really piling in. In an area like South Africa that gets just a little over a foot of rain a year, the ducks really key into what they call over here pans, which are natural shallow water area lakes, uh, ponds, I'd call them back home. We, we got in a, a few hours before dark, became situated, and, and just waited on the birds to come in. And, and usually, especially the yellow bills, anybody that's ever shot mallard ducks anywhere over decoys will immediately uh, bond with that yellow bill. He's as familiar as a mallard back home. The way, the way he responds and the way he decoys and the way he comes in, we've eaten them since we've been here and they taste a lot like our mallards back home. They're absolutely delicious. You, you, can, you can find the, the mallard-like yellow bill duck practically everywhere, just like the matter. The matter is practically in all the different habitats uh, as a puddler back, back home. But here you see the yellow-billed duck filling that same niche, and right along with him is, is the red-billed teal. But then you have to get off the beaten path to go find the hot and tight teal. The hot and tight teal is in these old rotten bottom cattail-like or reed-lined marshes or very, very shallow ephemeral habitat. Uh, one of my favorite, and I felt just like I was in Mississippi, was when we went to find the African pygmy goose. We, we drove over the mountains and through <laughs> down into the valley, into the coastal plains of Zulu land. We were in the, the heart of Zulu land. It was like seeing Africa for one of the first times, even though I'd been here a couple of weeks. And there was this huge mile and a half long oxbow. And just like back home, we, 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 we gotta find it. It's like finding a needle in a haystack, these tiny little birds the size of a McDonald's quarter pounder. We, we've gotta go find four of them on a, on a big oxbow that's just absolutely rife with lily pads and submerged aquatics. So we begin to scout the trails and, and to look. And it's like finding a needle in a haystack. 
but just the, the vegetation community, it was just like being at home. The heat, the humidity, I felt just like I was in Mississippi on a slough bank. And it, it, so in one hand, it, it's, as, it's as familiar as anything you've ever duck hunted, but at the same time, I'm in Africa. One thing I'll never forget is when we were hunting for the African pygmy goose. We were just outside of this little rural community. And as we shot just a few times, a lot of the locals came to see what was going on. And there they were seeing, almost it seemed like to me for the first time and touching for the first time these beautiful little colorful jewels that we plucked right in their backyard. We've come all the way across the world. And, and it was, I don't know, it, 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 it's, it's hard for me to articulate, but it was looking at them look and admire the bird in the same way I was. And, and yet it was right there in their backyard and they hadn't seen it. And, and I don't know, it was, it was just very interesting. The, the, the colors, when you actually get these birds in hand, they sparkle like little jewels. Species collecting is kind of becoming a thing. I know a guy are chasing the North American slam. I, we get a lot of contact about different birds around the world. And I can remember those days. I can remember those days I wanted to collect birds. And eventually what I realized is I was collecting experiences. When you come into a country like South Africa, you've got this, these dozen birds that don't exist back home. Some are generalists, some are specialists. You, you get to go down the different trails and, and explore their habitats, hunt them at their level with their rules, not with my duck hunting rules, with the rules of their world. The, the similarities to duck hunting back home, but the differences. You just can't hang everything on the same peg. Uh, I know that it seems real different spot stalking or jump shooting birds to decoy purists like I grew up hunting. But it's not the same thing. It's just, it's, 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 it's how the game is played. You've got to hunt those birds based on their rule set, not on your own. One of the, one of the most rewarding aspects of living the life of its duck season somewhere is, is not the places, it's not even the species, stories, it's, it's ultimately the people. It doesn't matter which language you speak, there, there, there are many languages right here in South Africa. And it, it didn't matter, the, the only language that matters is, is the only universal language was duck hunting. And that's where you connect with everybody you come in contact with at such a profound level. Just those simple times in the field pulling together a hunt, whether it's decoying or pass shooting, like we do, like they do, spot and stalk. It, 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 is, it is a team effort among kindred spirits. And that that is something that I love more about duck hunting than nearly anything else. Life short, get ducks.